Hello friends, my name is Brian and we're going to do a little bit different of a video today. I'm in my hometown, Haleiwa, Hawaii, and we're going to do some homemade e-biking and some vintage suspension setup. I'm at my friend's house and his dad is a homemade e-biker and there's two of them here so we're going to see how that goes. So this is Bill, and we're gonna go. Ah. We got the vintage e-bikes, check those out in a second. Just letting it roll. So we got a Marzocchi 666, can't buy these anymore. This is the real Marzocchi, not the Fox Zocchi. And the DHX. Is there any part of the suspension you feel like could improve? Doesn't seem like it. You're happy with I'm them? I'm not sure exactly, because I, I, I have no reference point. Okay, we are gonna be clipped in, and this is a Kona Dog Primo. Primo. Yeah, I adjusted the rebound. So the most important one is the bottom down there. Okay. So as a testament to Coil Shocks being absolutely amazing, his rear DHX felt great, but the Marzocchi Bomber 666 needed some work. I basically speeded the rebound up a few clicks till he thought it was a little bit better. And then I turned the preload adjusters on the top because it's a coil fork to match the feel of the rear coil. Very simple, should give some improvements. Unfortunately, the bike I'm riding, the Kona Dog, has a dogged air shock on it. And this turned into a rescue mission because most of the bolts were ready to fall out of this bike. There's a saying that Bill's son told me, my friend, Hawaii's not third world, it's 2.5 world. So everything is a little bit janky. This is the homemade e-bike kit on this Kona dog. It's a mid-drive buffang motor that costs about 400 bucks on Amazon. And it's got a lot of power and a pretty substantial battery. In 2005, I would have killed to have this on my old school mountain bike. Now my Kona dog has some loose linkage and I did my best to make it as safe as possible, but I gotta take it easy on her. Now this size large I'm riding feels like a small. The Buffang mid-drive e-bike conversion kit is incredibly powerful. Like so much so, I was turning the power way down to like two out of nine settings. We just rode the road and now we're in Sunset Hills in Pupakea and we're gonna hit the trails on the homemade electric e-bikes. We're gonna ride at Sunset Hills. It is one of Hawaii's largest trail centers and it's directly above the super famous Bonsai Pipeline surf spot. Basically, we're gonna look down on Pipeline. Gentle, you got that loose linkage. Now you can see the reverse arch on this fork, so you know what kind of brand it is. It is definitely a Manitou. And as a testament to Manitou's amazing machining skills, this fork is pretty plush and half the stanchions are rusted. And you can count on this thing had never been opened ever in probably 15, 20 years. Now to be fair, this was a high-end fork in the day, but it's got plenty of mid-stroke support and it's lasted over 20 years. So round of applause for Manitou and their high-end products. Now when it comes to the rear suspension, this has a tiny Fox float on the rear and it was very under impressive. Should have a coil on it. Now this Manitou fork may have 30 millimeter stanchions, but it's completely up to the task for cross country riding and I'm pretty darn impressed to be perfectly honest. I have to get a measure, I know. Okay, we've been riding cross country trails for like 10 minutes or so. And power delivery is a little inconsistent, but it's, it's pretty good. I'm enjoying it a lot more than no motor. Now the Bafang mid-drive conversion motor, it's a little bit inconsistent, like I just told you. It's like 
full on or full off. It may have some issues. This bike I'm riding does have quite a few miles. Now one extremely impressive part about the Bafang mid-drive motor conversion, it is a very quiet motor system. All the high-end e-bikes I ride nowadays have a lot of noise coming out of them. The mid-drive buffang motor has a nice, beautiful little purring noise. It sounds much better than a $10,000 e-bike. Maybe someone in the comments can help me explain. Now the e-bike conversion kit on the bike I'm riding costs $600 on Amazon and there's a beautiful article I linked in the description on how to set it up on your bike. I can tell you it is extremely powerful. Reading the fine print, it says it has 100 newton meters of torque and the more expensive 52 volt version would have 160 which would be way overkill for a mountain bike so I would go for the cheap one. Now this is one of Bill's favorite trails, and there's no pounding blue flow trails I found in Hawaii. They're just kind of cruising cross country trails with mild elevation drops. And the suspension platform on the Kona Dog works perfectly good for this. And that motor, well, it does add quite a bit of weight to the bike, but that super small 26 inch frame is actually pretty playful. Now this video was supposed to be a suspension setup video, but I realized having fun and enjoying the moment is the most important thing about riding your bike. And how much better does a view get than this? This was one of my most memorable rides, a couple of cross country trails on some 15 year old e-bikes with an Amazon conversion kit. You can have an absolutely amazing time. Now I would upgrade the brakes if I did convert my e-bike, but I would definitely go for that Amazon mid-drive kit. It was really impressive. As far as Manitou goes, wow. Even their 10, 12 year old stuff works better than a modern RockShark Yari. No matter how you look at e-bikes, whether it's a $600 Amazon kit or a $15,000 S-Works bike, e-bikes are just awesome because they let you have more fun out there and more trail time. And you know what's also awesome? vintage suspension that was done right. So click the video on the screen to see how awesome Marzocchi used to be, even on a modern 200 millimeter travel e-bike.